Ethan Patterson was an average guy, average in all the ways that don't make the news or spark wild parties. He had sandy brown hair, always in need of a haircut, and blue eyes that studied the world with a quiet intensity. A recent college dropout, he made his living flipping burgers and taking orders at the worn-out drive through speaker of Moe's drive through an all-night diner on the edge of town. Moe's drive through was nestled between a tire store and a long-abandoned laundromat. With its faded black and yellow paint, it was a remnant of a bygone era, a beacon of neon in the still, inky darkness of the small-town night. By day, it was a bustling hive, filled with the hum of chatter, laughter, and the occasional spat between the cook and the waitress. By night, it was a fluorescent-lit fortress against the creeping shadows, the flickering sign overhead promising late-night comfort food to the weary and hungry. The night shift at Moe's was Ethan's domain. It was a thankless job, characterized by irregular patrons, misbehaving machinery, and a radio that only ever played static-filled country songs. But it had a routine Ethan found soothing. He'd sweep the floors, clean the counters, restock the condiments, and then settle behind the drive through window, watching the minutes pass on the battered old clock above the soda machine. The tick-tock rhythm of the clock was his nightly soundtrack, and Ethan found himself attuned to its every chime, each stroke of the hour a familiar note in the symphony of his nocturnal solitude. And so, when the printer by the drive through window whirred to life at exactly 2.59 a.m., spitting out an order ticket, it felt like a discordant note that disrupted the harmony. Ethan's brow furrowed at the sight of the ticket. An order for a cheeseburger, fries, and a vanilla milkshake. Classic Americana. What was unsettling about it was not the order itself, but its timing and its origin. The drive through had been dead quiet for an hour, and the screen that displayed the license plate of any car that pulled up was blank. He glanced around, peering out into the deserted parking lot bathed in the harsh glow of the overhead lights. No vehicles, no customers, nothing but the distant whisper of the wind brushing through the nearby trees. A sense of unease pricked at his nerves. He shook it off, crumpling the order and tossing it in the bin. It's just a system glitch, Ethan murmured to himself, not entirely convinced. Little did he know that unclaimed 2.59 a.m. order was the beginning of a nightmarish journey into the uncharted depths of terror and the supernatural. Ethan tried to brush off the mystery of the order, attributing it to a simple system glitch. But the more he thought about it, the more it gnawed at him. The drive through system was old, but it had never printed an order without a car at the window. Plus, there was the precise timing of the order, 2.59 a.m., that tugged at his subconscious. It was unusual, unnatural even. After days of the mystery order replaying in his mind, Ethan decided to take action. On his next shift, he arrived a few hours early. The restaurant was still open for the day crowd, and he managed to catch his manager, a weary man named George who always looked like he was one day away from retirement. Ethan asked if he could check the security tapes from the previous week. George shrugged his permission, too tired to ask why, and handed over the keys to the small, cluttered office at the back of the restaurant. Once inside the dusty room, Ethan settled in front of the ancient security system. It was a tangle of wires and screens, each one displaying grainy black-and-white images of the restaurant and parking lot. He located the footage from the mysterious night and began to review it. His eyes darted from screen to screen, scrutinizing every shadow, every flicker. But there was nothing to see, just the empty drive through and the vacant parking lot. He leaned back in the creaky office chair, rubbing his weary eyes. Was he just imagining things? Or was there really something uncanny about that order? Ethan decided to leave no stone unturned. He went over the footage once more, this time focusing on the timestamp, his heart pounded in his chest when he noticed something odd. The timestamp flickered precisely at 2.59 a.m., the exact moment when the order was placed. It was as if the universe itself had hiccuped, 
His logical mind battled with the mounting fear and uncertainty. He told himself it was merely a power surge or some technological glitch. But the part of him that stayed awake during horror movie marathons, the part that held a fascination for the unknown and the eerie, couldn't be pacified. Over the next few nights, his shifts became a dread-filled countdown to 2.59 a.m. Each night he found himself glancing at the clock more frequently, his heart pounding louder with each passing minute. The sense of anticipation was almost unbearable. At times he thought he saw shadows moving in his peripheral vision, heard whispers in the static of the radio. He jumped at every flicker of the drive through sign, every unexpected gust of wind. His fear was turning into paranoia. He began to see threats in the most benign occurrences, the friendly hoot of an owl, the rustle of leaves, the clatter of a knocked-over trash can. Each noise, each movement, felt like a precursor to the unknown terror that lurked just outside his understanding. He imagined shadowy figures waiting in the darkness outside the diner, unseen eyes watching his every move. Every car that pulled up to the drive through after midnight made him start, his breath hitching until he saw a living, breathing customer at the window. His dreams turned into nightmares, filled with ghostly hands reaching out to him, disembodied voices whispering his name, phantom cars driving endlessly around the drive through He woke up each night drenched in sweat, heart pounding in his chest, the echoes of the nightmares lingering in his room. And each time he tried to share his fears with his colleagues, they would laugh it off, making jokes about the haunted drive through It was just stress, they said, or maybe he was reading too many horror stories. The skeptical reactions of his co-workers only heightened his sense of isolation and fear. He felt like a man adrift in a sea of horror, unable to call for help, the waves of fear lapping at his sanity. Days turned into weeks and Ethan felt the edges of his world starting to fray. Sleep became elusive, and his every waking moment was consumed by the enigma of the unclaimed order. It was becoming increasingly difficult to maintain his composure during his shifts, and his once reliable routine was now a minefield of potential terrors. Still, Ethan continued his solitary vigil, drawn in by the chilling mystery of the order at 2.59 a.m. He was trapped in a horrifying loop, anticipation gnawing at him each night as the minute hand inched closer to the accursed time. Yet, he couldn't stop, couldn't break free. The fear was intense, almost debilitating, but it was the not knowing that was truly unbearable. He had to uncover the truth, no matter what horrors waited in the darkness. Little did he know, his descent into paranoia was only the beginning. As the nights wore on, Ethan's fear morphed into a tangible entity, a living, breathing companion that shadowed his every move. His every thought was consumed by the phantom order. As he was responsible for closing the restaurant that night, he had let his colleagues leave early. Now he was alone, embroiled in the terror of his solitary vigil, a night like no other, when the chilling mystery of the 2.59 a.m. order took a terrifying turn. That night, as the clock inched closer to the cursed time, Ethan felt a palpable shift in the air. An electric charge that prickled at his skin, a whispering hum that echoed in his ears. His palms were sweaty, his breaths shallow. He was leaning over the counter, eyes glued to the clock. Then it happened. The lights in the restaurant flickered and died abruptly, plunging the diner into an abyss of darkness. Ethan's heart hammered against his ribs as the glow from the drive through sign cast an eerie, neon-green pallor over everything. A chill swept over him, the icy fingers of dread curling around his heart. He tried to move, to reach for the emergency flashlight under the counter, but his body refused to respond. It was as though an unseen force was holding him in place, an invisible shroud of malevolence wrapping itself around him. The drive through window was now the sole point of connection to the world outside. He was drawn to it, his gaze riveted to the glass, the usual sights, the shadowed outline of the empty parking lot, the distant highway, all vanished. 
Instead, a car suddenly materialized, an otherworldly apparition bathed in the spectral glow of the drive through sign. The car itself was of an old make, its lines and curves distorted, as if viewed through a rippling pool of water. A ghostly hand materialized from the driver's side, a phantasmal white against the darkness. The spectral hand moved slowly, reaching out to the drive through window. It stopped just short of the glass, as if waiting for something. A shiver of fear ran down Ethan's spine, each tiny hair on his arm standing on end. He wanted to scream, to run, but fear had him in its vice-like grip. A wisp of cold air brushed past him, sending an icy shiver down his spine. The frosty breath of the unseen chilled him to the bone. His heart pounded in his chest like a wild drum, his breaths coming out in ragged gasps. But just as quickly as it had appeared, the phantom car, the ghostly hand, all disappeared into thin air, leaving Ethan alone in the engulfing darkness. The silence was oppressive, the solitude complete. It was as though time itself had stopped, leaving him trapped in a bubble of terror. His body finally responded to his desperate urge to flee. He stumbled blindly towards the back door of the restaurant, his every instinct screaming at him to escape the unholy nightmare. His heart pounded in his ears, a deafening beat that drowned out everything else. His breaths were shallow, labored, each one a struggle. But as he neared the back door, he froze. His blood turned to ice, his heart stuttered in his chest. The back door was slightly ajar, a sliver of darkness peering out from the gap. A soft, chilling whisper slithered through the air, carrying his name. A cold dread settled in the pit of his stomach. The entity had found him. His terror escalated to an unbearable pitch. He turned around, planning to make a dash for the front door, but his body refused to move. The unseen force had him in its grip again, holding him in place as the spectral figure made its way towards him. Ethan's last thoughts were of escape, his final feelings those of icy, paralyzing fear. He had faced the terror head-on, and it had claimed him. The terrifying climax of his ordeal was just beginning. The spectral entity advanced, unhurried, feeding on Ethan's terror. His heart was a pounding drum in his chest, reverberating through his ears, drowning out all other sounds. His breath hitched in his throat, strangled by the noose of fear that tightened around his neck. The entity was close now, just a few steps away. Ethan could make out a figure, a form shrouded in darkness. The faint glow from the drive through sign threw a wash of spectral green onto its face. Ethan's heart lurched in his chest as he took in the sight, his blood turning to ice in his veins. It was a face he recognized, a face he saw every day in the mirror. His own face stared back at him from the spectral figure, a twisted reflection of himself. But there was something horribly wrong. His reflection was contorted in an expression of pure terror, a silent scream etched on its face. Time seemed to freeze in that moment. The realization of what he was seeing slammed into him like a freight train. He was looking at himself. His own fear mirrored back at him. But how? Why? Questions raced through his mind, each more horrifying than the last. His spectral doppelganger reached out towards him, its ghostly hand stretching out, mirroring the phantom order that had started it all. It was a scene straight out of his worst nightmares, a chilling reality he could neither comprehend nor accept. Ethan's breaths came in shallow, ragged gasps. His pulse roared in his ears, his gaze locked onto the spectral hand, his own fear reflecting back at him in the form of his own face. The phantom hand moved closer, reaching for him. A sense of impending doom washed over him, dread curling its icy fingers around his heart. His body was locked in place, an invisible shroud of terror pinning him down. His mind was a whirlpool of terror and confusion. His own deathly pale face stared back at him, the terror in its eyes a grim mirror of his own. The spectral hand was inches from his face now, its cold touch almost upon him. And then... It happened. 
The spectral figure leaned over him, its phantom hand making contact with his skin. An icy chill spread from the point of contact, seeping into his bones. His heart gave a final lurch, and then there was silence. The deafening roar in his ears quieted down to a soft whisper. Ethan's vision blurred, the world around him fading to gray. The last thing he saw was his own terrified face staring back at him, a silent scream etched on its spectral features. His last breath left his body, a whisper of fear in the cold, empty air. The entity's grip tightened around him, the last bit of life draining from his body. As his heart gave its final, futile beat, the entity dissipated into thin air, taking with it the phantom car, the spectral hand, the terrifying doppelganger. All that remained was Ethan, lifeless, his body slumped on the floor of the drive through The mystery of his chilling end etched in the eerie silence of the night. Ethan's body was found the next morning by the early shift workers, a ghastly sight that sent shockwaves through the small community. His eyes were wide open, a look of sheer terror frozen on his face, the story of his horrifying end untold. The restaurant was immediately closed, a silence descending upon it that mirrored the quiet horror of Ethan's demise. The security footage from that night revealed nothing but a ghostly flicker around the time of the Phantom Order. His colleagues were at a loss, their usual banter replaced by hushed whispers and grim silence. The memory of Ethan, vibrant and full of life, contrasted starkly with the eerie stillness that had claimed the once bustling drive through The 2.59 a.m. order became an ominous legend, a haunting story whispered in hushed tones amongst the locals. The drive through never reopened, its neon sign now a silent sentinel in the night, a chilling reminder of the terror that unfolded within its walls. To this day, the mystery of Ethan's demise remains unsolved, his final moments a terrifying enigma. As the clock strike 2.59 a.m., the spectral order continues to echo through the deserted drive through a chilling legacy of a night of unimaginable horror.